Welcome. We discuss API swag and postman in this exercise. Uh, we explain what an API is, which is a programming application interface that is that sounds like a gateway between a user that is trying to get information from a corporation. So the corporation stands behind the API, the user is in front of the API. Now the API, it's like, aside from providing information to the user, it's like a, a security platform also, so that user does not have direct access to that company's infrastructure. So you just have access to the API. An example of real life API will be a website that connects to the, that's an example of API implementation, will be a real life or a third party website that connects to different uh, airlines, okay, and gets an aggregate of information from those airlines, like, you know, seats available, prices of tickets and stuff. So you as a user connects, to, you log on to that website and you see all those information. So that third party website is not, <laughs> is not connecting directly to the airline's infrastructure. It's just connecting to those airline, airlines API and retrieving the information. So that's basically what an API is. And so here in section one, you get an analogy of what an API looks like. A REST API will ex be explained to you the meaning of REST and the HTTP methods commonly used with REST, with the REST API. Also, we'll show you what a modern API looks like and some of the big players in the API economy. In section two, we will be discussing and documenting APIs with Swagger. So let me click on that. And uh, Swagger is like the de facto standard for documenting APIs. So if you cl click on this link, it takes you to the parent website, which is swagger.io. Okay. Uh, and in swagger.io, you can explore some of the tools, such as Swagger Hub here. So I would like you to sign up on Swagger Hub, create an account. Okay. Now I created an account on Swagger Hub. I created an API and this is a summary. On clicking documentation, this is a summary of what my API looks like, Sydney Scanner. Okay. And this, these are some of the big players in the API industry, Google, Microsoft. Okay. Uh, Google is there. I know Amazon is there. So if you move, um, if you checked in the previous section, you will see that described. So if you're on the API website, click on Explore Tools, it shows you Swagger Hub, Swagger Editor, UI, Code Gen, all of that good stuff. You can go to Swagger Hub. I've already provided the link for you to sign up. If you have signed up, okay, let me log out. All right. Uh, so here, if I click on here, it takes me to the sites where I can sign up, all right, which is this. So you sign up with your GitHub, okay? Me, I've already done that. So when I click on login, I can just sign up with my GitHub, right? Okay, now, to create an API, you click on create, right? Uh, choose, for some reason, if I try to edit some things on using 3.0, it gives me an error. So let's just try with 2.0 here. I'm choosing the template. I can choose any of these templates. Maybe let me choose simple API or choose pet store. Let me choose pet store. I call it maybe kernel. All right, and then create, uh, create, um, the API. So we are just using the pet store template. So if it's some, if your website is going to be about something different from pet, then you can edit all of this to reflect that and it will change. Okay. So for example, if I edit anything in in this YAML format, it will change. Now maybe I want to put Sydney here. Okay. So I come to type two. I edit that Sydney. So and it changes. Changes to Sydney Pet Store. I want to put a description here. 
this is an API uh, documentation for my website. I can put the link if I have a website on pets, right? So all of this change it, changes the, the stories. These emails can also be edited because they are here, right? I can come here and put the email I want. <clears throat> now, assuming I'm not, I don't want this pet, pet, maybe my, I want maybe user, I want my link to say user. Okay, because now clicking on this pet means, this pet with the post method means, oh, you want to add a new pet, that's you want to create a new resource, right? If you want to use put, it means, oh, you want to update an existing pet, right? Okay, so now assuming I don't want pet, I want a user there, right? Hold on. I scroll up and come here. As soon as I change uh, tags on that tags name, as soon as I change name, everything changes. So I put user here and everything changes here for this bit so so this is how my links will use my so this will be for example if my the name of my website is www.sydney.com so on when i put my site and i put forward slash user it means oh i want to create a new user on uh, www.sydney.com so that's what all of this means and that's why it's so easy so any change i make i can click on save and saves that, right? Okay, so I will be asking you to share or submit your collaborative URL. So to do that, click on this share icon and it shows you this link. So copy and submit. If I want to see the summary of all what I've edited, okay, I can click on view documentation here and it shows me a summary of my API. So look at Sydney Pet Store. This is an API documentation for my website on pets. So, so this is what I edited. Yeah, I edited this to be user, you know. So just the same way I can edit any other thing here. Right? All right. So that's basically what I want to say on Swag. So the next one is next section is section three which talks about postman All right so when you click on the link to the course postman is described used for testing uh, development of apis by testing requests and responses right so click on this link and this takes you directly to where you can download your postman or you scroll down you can you can download and install on your system or you can use the web version, depending on what you want. For Chrome users, you can use the web version or any person who doesn't want to install and use the web version, right? So when you install Postman, okay, it looks like this. Now it may not look dark because um, I mean, I'm using the dark theme. So to change it, you can go to settings, go to themes, and if I click on this, my whole team changes to white. If I want a dark team, I, I do this. So I settle for a dark team, right? Okay, so uh, let's see. So it says you are set for the next exercise. So the next exercise, so in, in that previous exercise, you can set up, click on plus, so this gives you this interface, click on body, right? Click on raw, click on JSON. Okay, so now, now that we are in the second part of the tutorial, it says to complete this exercise, visit this website, okay? Copy your unique URL here, okay? This is my unique URL. The website gives you a unique URL. And it explains what you can do with this so 
with the if you want to create a resource put your unique url put your forward slash put the name of the resource you want to create right now it must take a json payload any other thing it will not it will reject so for get method the same thing but if I just the get method it doesn't need a json payload it can be blank it just works with this resource right for updating you use a put method http method but you have to add an id and for a delete you use a resource and an id also so we'll test that just briefly okay so all this explains what you need to do this is your test uh test um data so it says okay create an intent with these details right okay all right, so I've copied my unique URL. I want to create an intent, put a forward slash intent. Put on my posts, okay? Um, from the tutorial, I'll copy the test data, okay? Go to my postman, paste it here. So this takes in a JSON format. This is a JSON format, JSON, right? Posts. Uh, we have put the resource forward slash intent. We want to create an intent that has all these values. That is the intent name is Sarah, age five, is in accounting department, is the principal manager, and status is activated. This is data was created, right? So clicking on post, uh, clicking on send will create the data. We create the resource and we know it's created because you can see a response 201 saying the request has been fulfilled and resulted in a new resource being created. So we can see all of this. Okay. And the resource is created with a unique ID. So this ID reminds me of a database. Can you guess what that database is? We discussed database in the last course. So it creates the resource with a unique ID. So that's about it. If you want to be sure that oh this this created or uh, if to prove to some doubting Thomas is that you actually created the resource you can use the get method all right so and just click on send and the get method returns returns the data and says 200 so it was successful response 200 successful right you can see the id front if you want to update click on put right now update like we explained uses the resource and id right and takes in a json payload okay so so we will take the kind of data we used previously which was this and edit it then post it right copy and paste okay So edit it. Maybe I want to put Sarah in um, human resources department. Okay. Or uh, maybe retain her role, call. Okay. Keep her name. Change her age to maybe 100. <laughs> no. Let's change her age to maybe 30. Okay. Uh, status spending. Sorry. Spending. So we have changed a few things. Change spending, human resources, age. All right. So time to post the data. So put your put method for updating it. And then uh, put your intent. Remember, you need a resource. You need an ID. So copy the ID when it was created. Okay. To show that it is that data with that unique um, ID that we want to that is the id that is the data we want to change right so click on send and you should get a successful response it says 200 so it has created that to be sure we can delete this here okay remove the link here the id here and get do a get response now click on send so check 
Did we change age? Yes, we did. And this is new information. Age has changed to 30, human resources pending. So it was successful. Response 200, right? Okay, so the last thing we can display is delete. Delete, remember, uses an ID. Okay, so we want to delete this data with this unique ID. Okay, put our forward slash put ID, right? And delete doesn't need a JSON payload according to the documentation. So all you need to do is click on send, right? Everything is right. And it says 200. So that means it has deleted this resource. You want to confirm, remove the ID, do a get method, and this should return empty. So it is empty. So that means it worked. So we have been able to display or test that all these methods are working. We have created a, a resource. We have um, read the resource. We have updated resource. We have deleted it. So that stands for CRUD. C R U U D. Create, read, update, delete. Right. So I'm this same thing you have just done. We'll be doing it in section four, which is for testing. I will ask you to share. You first do a multi-choice question, 10 questions. So based on what you have done, you have read here, you should be able to answer all of them correctly. Then you share your API, which I've sh just shown you, and then you perform crude operations with your own test data, all right? So you'll be submitting screenshots, okay? And um, you'll be submitting screenshots, so if you have understood all what we have been doing, you will know what to do to create the method to use to create a data of a student. Meaning this student is the resource. This is the resource, okay? Student is the resource. Um, so let's edit this. Now I want you to create, hold on. So I would want you, when it's time to update the information, I would want you to, To change your first name in that data, change your, put your email, okay? So this is the test data that came with. So create this data. But by the time it's time to update, update this data with your specific um, group you are, whether you are doing Node.js, whether you are doing PHP, whether you are doing Python, update it in course. Your email, put your email and your first name, put it right. So once you have done all of that, convince me that yes, your data actually updated, okay? So you need, to, you know what to do here. You need to use a get method to show me that yes, your data changed and also delete it. So I just need screenshots. So I should be expecting like five screenshots for all of this. And the usual way you submit screenshots, you submit. So once you are done with that, we can move on to the next course, right? All right, so best of luck, guys. See you in the next video.